I prided myself on being a devoted father for securing a house for my daughter. However, my husband, without consulting me, decided to use my money to purchase a luxury apartment. Frustrated by his audacious plan, I swiftly responded by presenting him with divorce papers. In the face of my unexpected move, my husband was taken aback, clearly unprepared for such a turn of events. With a smirk, I, Jocelyn Anderson, a 50-year-old office worker with a passion for French since my student days, initiated what I considered the real retaliation. Let me take you back a bit. I had been married at 23, but my first husband passed away just six months into our marriage due to a tragic traffic accident caused by a drunk driver. Although I received $500,000 as insurance money, no amount of wealth could bring my late husband back. During that period of mourning, Ernest Anderson, a compassionate colleague from the same company, provided solace by lending a patient ear to my stories. Gradually, our connection deepened, leading to our remarriage when I was 25. Fast forward to the present, and my daughter, Christina, now an independent illustrator, had stirred tension in our family. Disagreements over her education arose during her senior year of high school. Ernest had always imposed his ideal path for Christina, envisioning her attending a prestigious university and pursuing a conventional career in a big corporation. His expectations clashed with Christina's passion for illustration, a talent she had cultivated since childhood. Despite my initial support for Ernest's educational decisions, I found myself at odds with him when Christina expressed her desire to attend an art university to become an illustrator. While I was open to embracing her chosen path, Ernest vehemently opposed it, insisting on a conventional trajectory that clashed with our daughter's dreams. The struggle over Christina's future had become the battleground, and the real retaliation was about to unfold. I opted not to embark on a freelance career initially, choosing instead to work for a company. Christina shared her aspirations to become an illustrator, but my husband dismissed her dreams, considering it nearly a pastime with drawings. His harsh words compelled me to defend Christina's autonomy, asserting that it was her life and she should have the opportunity to pursue her passion. This stance only fueled his anger, as he asserted that it was his daughter and that a child's role was to fulfill their parents' dreams. He adamantly believed that if Christina followed his prescribed path, she would unquestionably find happiness. I was taken aback by his biased views, hoping he would eventually understand and support our daughter's choices. Unfortunately, my optimism was misplaced, leading to a deep rift between us. Despite my financial support for Christina's education and living expenses, Ernest remained dissatisfied, continually expressing his discontent. Even after Christina successfully gained admission to her preferred art university and secured a job as an illustrator, Ernest refused to acknowledge her achievements. His complaints persisted, questioning the worth of the money spent on tutoring and labeling her a failure. Christina, resilient in her pursuit, worked energetically, occasionally sacrificing weekends and sleep for her craft. However, Ernest's attitude towards her job remained unchanged. Moreover, he became harsher towards me for supporting Christina, criticizing everyday aspects of our household. Realizing this was his true nature, I found staying at home increasingly painful. Fortunately, our work roles in different departments at the same company spared me from daily confrontations. Yet, amidst this strained dynamic, Ernest surprisingly declared his intention to buy Christina a luxury apartment, citing her importance as his daughter. Despite his apparent disdain for her career choice, this sudden change in attitude raised suspicions, prompting me to question his motives. Doubts crept into my mind about whether Ernest even had the financial means to purchase a luxury apartment. Observing my reaction, he coldly smirked and disclosed his plan, stating that I would be the one footing the bill. Shocked, I protested, urging him not to make such decisions without consulting me. Angrily, Ernest snorted, revealing his knowledge of the $500,000 insurance money from my late husband, suggesting I use it to fund the apartment. He callously declared his intent to live there with Christina, emphasizing that both she and I were ultimately his possessions. 
fueled by a fierce anger, I could not fathom his vindictive scheme and the audacity to exploit crucial insurance money for such a purpose. In response, I retaliated without mercy, presenting him with divorce papers. Astonished, Ernest likely hadn't anticipated my preparedness, but this marked the commencement of my real retaliation. Facing him with a smirk, I explained my long-standing lack of trust in someone who discriminated against his own daughter and expressed my exhaustion with constant criticism. I disclosed my decision to divorce him, clarifying that I had been contemplating it for a while, waiting for the opportune moment. Seizing on his earlier mention of divorce, I handed him the papers, urging him to file quickly if he desired freedom. Initially dismissing it as a joke, Ernest reacted angrily when confronted with the reality of divorce. My anger peaked as he attempted to downplay the situation. Unperturbed, I insisted he accept the divorce papers, emphasizing the incomprehensible principles behind his actions. Threatening legal consultation, Ernest reluctantly received the papers, still claiming it was all a jest. Concerned about potential retaliation, I swiftly left the house, submitting the divorce papers to the city court. I promptly informed Christina about the outrageous behavior, and she too expressed fury. She condemned her father's actions and offered solace, suggesting that I stay at her apartment for a while. So, I made the decision to spend the night at Christina's place. That evening, we delved into discussions, meticulously planning our next moves against Ernest. About a week later, on holiday, Christina and I paid a visit to Ernest's house, the place I had called home until just a week prior, now feeling like a distant stranger's abode. Upon ringing the doorbell, Ernest swiftly emerged, adopting a condescending gaze as he questioned our purpose. He arrogantly assumed we had come to apologize for everything. Despite the infuriating condescension, I suppressed my anger and spoke in a meek, apologetic tone, claiming that I had indeed come to apologize for my wrongdoings. Christina, playing the role of a repentant daughter, echoed my sentiments. Oblivious to the theatrix, Ernest appeared genuinely pleased, believing we had come to our senses. However, his curiosity was piqued when he noticed the bags we carried, bags so full they were on the verge of bursting, tied up tightly to conceal their contents. From one of the bags, I extracted a bundle of actual $10,000 bills. Expressing remorse for my actions, I offered him some of my late husband's insurance money, urging him to use it to live in the luxury apartment with Christina. I mentioned the $500,000 total and asked him to keep it safe. Ernest's eyes gleamed at the sight of the money, and he eagerly agreed to safeguard it. He led us into the house without hesitation. Despite having left just a week earlier, the place was in disarray, with laundry and garbage scattered about. Suppressing laughter, I imagined Ernest's struggle to maintain the house on his own. Christina and I placed the bag's contents into the safe excluding the $10,000 bundle. Fortunately, when Ernest went to the kitchen to make coffee, he remained oblivious to our actions. After returning to Christina's apartment, I grabbed the bags and left for a new place on my own. Christina bid me farewell with a smile, assuring me she would contact me once she was settled. Two days later, while I was peacefully asleep in my new residence, Ernest called, inquiring about the $500,000. I chuckled heartily, realizing that he had taken longer than expected to notice. Ernest had fallen for our trap. The bags mostly contained just newspapers, cleverly arranged to create the illusion of holding $500,000. I had only prepared $110,000 from the bank to make Ernest believe my ruse. After depositing that money back into my account, it was no longer in my possession. If Ernest had probed further and asked to see inside the bags, I intended to reveal the truth, asserting that such an incredible deal couldn't possibly be genuine. However, deceived by just the $10,000, Ernest had been completely fooled. I had only prepared $110,000 from the bank to make Ernest believe me. After depositing that money back into my account, it was no longer in my possession. If Ernest had probed further and asked to see inside the bags, I intended to reveal the truth, 
asserting that such an incredible deal couldn't possibly be genuine. However, deceived by just the $10,000, Ernest had been completely fooled. Until now, you did terrible things to Christina and me, so I thought it was only fair to retaliate like this. If you want to resent someone, resent your past self, not me, I calmly stated. Ernest, looking troubled, began to plead, admitting his faults and asking me to return. Shocked by his selfish reasoning, I firmly rejected his proposal. I'm not an ATM or your housekeeper. You're an adult, handle it yourself. Besides, I'm in France now. This isn't just a vacation, it's an overseas transfer for work. I decided to divorce you and start a new life abroad. I revealed, explaining my decision to pursue my dreams and escape from him. Ernest, perplexed by the news, questioned why I hadn't informed him earlier. I dismissed his query, stating that we were practically strangers now, working in different departments. Furthermore, I revealed that Christina would contact him the next day through a messaging app. The following day, amidst the early hours due to the time difference, I initiated a video call through the messaging app with Ernest and Christina. Christina began expressing her sentiments, reminiscing about her childhood adoration for Ernest, but quickly transitioning to her current disdain. You completely dismissed my career choice. That's when I saw your true nature. You just wanted to control me. There was no love. Now, I hate you and never want to see you again. This call is the last time we'll speak. I'm cutting ties, Christina declared firmly, leaving Ernest visibly distressed. Unexpectedly calm, Ernest pleaded for her understanding, seemingly assuming Christina would always adore him. However, Christina remained resolute, urging him to reflect on his actions. She then informed him that she had moved advising him not to attempt to locate her new address through investigators or any other means. Adding to her announcement, I informed Ernest that I had informed his workplace, relatives, and parents about the reasons for our divorce, ensuring transparency about our decision. With that, the call concluded, leaving Ernest to reflect on the consequences of his actions. After ending the video call with Christina, I mirrored her actions, ignoring Ernest's pleading apologies. His remorse no longer held any significance to me. Christina expressed a sense of relief, feeling liberated after voicing her true feelings. Executing our plan brought a semblance of satisfaction, especially witnessing the impact it had on Ernest. In the aftermath, Ernest faced consequences at various fronts. He became uncomfortable at work and eventually resigned, Disowned by relatives and parents, he had to abandon the luxury apartment purchase. His disruptive actions even led to a scene at Christina's workplace, resulting in a ban for entering. Ernest's selfish choices resulted in a cascade of losses, and he retreated into a reclusive existence at home. Attempts to contact him for work-related matters were in vain. When a colleague finally visited his house, they encountered a disheveled Ernest with a wild beard lifeless face, and a nauseating odor emanating from his abode. His once home had transformed into a ghostly garbage dump. Observing Ernest's miserable life, I couldn't help but think that he was reaping what he sowed. Meanwhile, I found happiness in my new life abroad, overcoming cultural barriers with careful communication and relishing the use of my French skills. The decision to transfer overseas proved to be a rewarding one. Christina, Thriving in her career as an illustrator, had been entrusted with significant projects. In our phone conversations, she conveyed her satisfaction, emphasizing the joy of pursuing her passion. As a parent, witnessing my daughter shine in her chosen path brought immense gratification. Despite the challenges and adversities, both Christina and I emerged from the ordeal, radiant and fulfilled in our respective lives. The journey, though tumultuous, affirmed that we had made the right choices, and the pursuit of our dreams had led to a brighter and more gratifying existence.